the WNEW where Rock lives two for Tuesday with the cars. That's Candy O and Good Times Roll before that. And I was really excited to start the show off of the doors today. Mm -hmm. Five to one from Waiting for the Sun and Love Me Two Times. Gotta love Two for Tuesday. It rocks. Yeah. And you can only hear it on any W. All right. I got some breaking news, man. You got breaking news? I'm going to break a story. Okay. This is You're not going to hear this on CNN. You're not going to hear ABC, NBC, CBS. All right. You know this little ruse that's going on in Times Square today? Little ruse? Oh, uh, People uh, are getting killed? Allegedly. Buildings, buildings uh, are uh, collapsing? Allegedly. An elevator. A construction elevator plummeted about 20 stories. Yeah. And they had to close down Times Square. Yes. To traffic and pedestrians. Yes. Hmm. Let's see. On the day that Giuliani is uh, starting to enforce these, these strip club <laughs> peep show things, he gets everybody out of Times Square. <laughs> yes. It was no accident. <laughs> Rudy Giuliani, I'm going on record right now. Mayor Giuliani has started bombing sex shops. <laughs> he clears out the area using the news yeah. to get people out of the areas. And now he is selectively putting explosives and bombing <laughs> sex shops and topless bars. You've heard it here first. Barricade the doors because the stormtroopers are coming in the studio any minute now. Well, they all have armbands on and they're marching down, uh, you know, Fifth Avenue right now. So You think I'm lying. <laughs> you, think I'm, you think I'm crazy, don't you? Yeah, a little bit. It's happening. Why don't you tell all the people in their cars that's what you think? That's yeah. what I think. They're losing it out there. Yeah, I, I had a drive-in. Yeah. I was in the gridlock. Yeah. You know the guy that crosses through the grid as the light's yellow and there's nowhere to go? Yeah. So now your light's green and you're looking at the side of his car, right. beeping? Right. What's your problem? <laughs> Are you listening to me right now? You see traffic isn't moving, and yet you go out into the middle of the intersection. Right. Knowing the light is yellow. Of course. It's, what's the matter with you? I'll tell you why that happens. Why does that happen? Every single person on the face of the earth thinks they're the only person on earth. The most important human being on the face of this earth. I'm the most important person on this earth. So they pull out thinking they're the only one that's going to do it. <laughs> of course. And people get around them. Yeah. And then they look in the mirror and everyone's doing it. I don't care if I'm inconvenient, inconvenient in you. As oh, me? As, no, I'm just saying I'm talking to the guy in the middle of the right. intersection. He don't care as long as he is taking care of himself. Oh, you're all a bunch of... Oh. Go ahead, say it. A-hole? Yeah. All right, that's close enough. Oh. You could see, if you're sitting in traffic and you're coming up to an intersection, you could look 20, 30 cars ahead right. and see if it's moving. Right. If it is and the light turns yellow, you could time, all right, I could see it's moving. Right. But if it's not moving, what? <laughs> Stay where you are. I hate you. How much longer did it take you to get in today? About an hour. Really? Yeah, about an hour long. Is that bad? Yeah. They're saying actually it's going to be a, a rough ride out of uh, Manhattan tonight. Well, they're closing down all kinds of roads and Times Square. Yeah, yeah. Accident. This is the most exciting city in the world, though. Mm. I mean, elevators are dropping. Buildings are falling apart. They're having subway accidents uh, uptown today. Clearing all the traffic. Motor and pedestrian out of Times Square on the day he enacts his uh, strip shop thing. You might be on. Oh. You might be onto something. Come on. All right. Don't BS me, Rudy. You know, I was walking around the halls of NEW today, and everyone was uh, giving us, giving me their 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 stories of the first time they went to a strip club. I think we hit a nerve yesterday. It, it's a very special part of your life for guys and I'm sure for females I mean the females go into the male strip clubs as well yeah so there's not many of those in Manhattan I've noticed has he even <laughs> addressed that issue I don't know is it just yeah, are there any less I, I don't know are there I, I, I don't know. know I don't know Opie are there I really don't know do you, do you know? know do you know <laughs> <laughs> I I wouldn't know well I hell wouldn't know <laughs> we gotta we gotta maybe get somebody who would know maybe one of the sales girls would know or the females out there and is he addressing that whole thing yeah is with it? the guys in g-strings and the marble bags <laughs> and the girls with clinching the dollars in their teeth right <laughs> And then they leave the club going, I think these strip bars are horrible. Right. Talking about the clubs the guys go to. Sure. I think we got to get some of the staff at NEW to tell their stories the first time they were in a strip club. Females and males. It would be fun because I heard some good ones today. Maybe as they're telling them, we could play some of the good 80s music in the background that all the strip clubs play. I think we could find some of that. She's my cherry pie. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now I'm making a way to the stage. It's beautiful Heather from Miami Beach, Florida. You might have met her as a five-dollar cheerleader. <laughs> Let's bring him to the stage right now. Give her a big guy. Uh... <laughs>
<laughs> Those guys do have some wacky voices. <laughs> All right, I don't have to give out the phone number because the phones are ringing like crazy. You want to send a fax from work? 212-957-WNEW. We're coming back with a twofer from Third Eye Blind. Stay there. 1027-WNEW, the rock of New York. Two for Tuesday with Third Eye Blind. Two from their debut CD from the band from San Francisco. That's Jumper and Semi Charm Life before that. Those guys were in the NEW Imaginary Ballroom last week. Yes, they were. They did a fine, fine job. Yeah. And we've had the Brian Setzer Orchestra in the Imaginary Ballroom. Who will be next? Hmm. Who will be next? Who? Really? Oh, no, no, not the who. Oh. That would be cool, but... Oh, oh, I thought you... Oh. The ceilings aren't uh, high enough <laughs> for Peter. All right. Is he still jumping and doing the thing? No, not last I saw. Last I saw uh, any of the Who, it was in Boston. They were doing the Quadrophenia thing. Mm -hmm. It was pretty cool, actually. So Gary Glitter before he uh, got busted for his kitty porn on his computer. Yeah. <laughs> hey, who took his place in that? Does anyone I don't know. know? I don't know. Billy Idol was doing it with him for a while, too, and uh, he was great. Yeah, Billy's great. That was cool. I, it's so funny whenever I hear people get in trouble for computers like that. Because uh -huh. first thing guys usually learn when they get a computer is downloading porno. Of course. It's the way it is. Of course. They don't understand that in these little recesses of your computer chips, all these pictures are going somewhere. You could wipe it off the screen, but it ain't gone. It's not gone for good. No. Right. Ladies, if uh, if your uh, husband's computer is sitting there, pop open the... Uh, <laughs> Come on, we're killing pop the Pop open the, the, the hard drive icon, right? and then just open up um, Windows, and then go into the file that says Temp. <laughs> Here will, you will see uh, all of his little little fun little pictures. We should tell the story really fast of the guy we worked with at the last job. He was the sales oh. guy. <laughs> yeah. He was the sales guy. <laughs> Claimed he liked women and all. Whatever. I don't care what your sexual preference is. Whatever. But it was pretty funny because he, he he claimed to be the big womanizer and stuff. He was on the computer all, all the, the time. time. So me and Anthony did a little... Uh, Research. Yeah. We go. Hey, a little investigative uh, uh, reporting. Let's pop in and see what kind of pictures he's getting. Because sometimes it get, the pictures get shifted to the temp file. Yeah. You yeah. open it up and whoa, what we saw. The guys with that big red ball and the leather strap around their mouth. The guy from like, Pulp Fiction. Yeah, yeah, the gimp. You know, the gimp, right. The gimp. It was the gimp. <laughs> <laughs> leather mask with the zipper over the mouth. <laughs> We're like, whoa, what's this guy into? What's man? this guy up to when he leaves the office? It was pretty wild. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> having a party on that thing. It was fun. Speaking of computers, you can instant uh, email us if you want. Mm -hmm. You go to the NEW website, and there's an icon there where you can just click on, and you can give us a comment about anything we have talked about this week. Thus far, I'm looking at it right now. Hi, Anthony Santos. How are you? Anthony Santos. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's the guy. I thought he was saying hi to you. No. Oh, just a little name. That's all he's saying is hi? It just popped up. That's how it happened. Bam. Really? Yeah. We live in the biggest city in the world. You know, just comment about hi. something through the email. It's great. Technology, and he's hey. using the same thing he could have used the tin can and a string. Exactly. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> You know, write some comments on there and send it into the NEW uh, studio for yeah. us. That'd be fun, okay? Cool. On the way, we got some twofers from Eric Clapton and Tom Petty next. Stay there. Uh, 1027 WNEW, where Rock lives. Tom Petty, two for Tuesday, Mary Jane's last dance. Uh, I love your... Uh, and running down a dream. I love the lyrics you sing to it right before you hit the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to make you smile. Yeah, that was pretty funny. All right, it's Sophie, it's Anthony. Thanks for checking us out today. Appreciate Appreciate it. A lot of people faxing and, and, and commenting on uh, today's show, even though we haven't really done anything yet. But uh, that's good. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a start. It's a sign. It's showing that this place has a little life. That's right. The engineers still sit around and just drink coffee all day, but that's okay. We're, as long as the stuff works. Yeah, the, actually, the equipment here works very, very it's nice. Great. I mean, I have a very high voice in uh, in public, but on the radio, I got like uh, Barry White voice because of the engineer. So we do have to thank him for that. Yeah. Sounds like I got kicked in the groin when I'm yeah. out in public, babe, babe. Anyway, uh, Kathy faxes. She says, boys, in reference to the titty bars, mm -hmm. I used to be uptight about them until I went and saw how lame they were. Mm -hmm. At male reviews, the guys get much closer to the girls, and it's easier to pick up the dancers there. So girls, chill out. That's pick Kathy. Pick up the dancers. Guys aren't going to pick up the dancers. They don't when have they go a to prayer. Ah. Uh, it's such a double standard, and there's a misunderstanding as to what, what happens when guys go out with their friends to uh, the booby bar. Yeah. And when girls go with a bunch of their friends to the guy bar. 
When the girls go, it's okay. You notice that? Oh, there's never a problem because it's not like us pigs right. going out to, to, to see uh, sluts <laughs> on stage. You're horrible little slut. <laughs> it's it's a little event. Yeah. Oh, we're just going out. It's a night out with the girls. Right. Oh, well, where are you going? Chippendale. <laughs> right. Well, that's guys shaking their stuff in front of your face as you drool and hand them money. Yeah. It's different. It's not like the, the sluts and ho <laughs> yeah. How is it different? How is it different? Are the sexes ever going to get along? Never. Do you think? Never. Never, right? And and uh, like we still can't figure out if there's uh, any any male dance clubs around yeah. anymore. No women have called on that. But I never hear uh, uh, Rudy talking about that. You know, is he going to shut these places down too? Maybe he doesn't want them shut down. Ah. Rudy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, I don't know. Very funny. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Actually, I knew a guy who, who told me uh, week after week that he was uh, dating a stripper. Dating a stripper. Dating. And he would go to the place she worked every Saturday night. Mm -hmm. He would spend a hundred dollars and go home empty-handed. And he called that dating a stripper. Wait, he wasn't even. Wait a minute. You mean he, he wasn't going home with her? No. He would just go and see her every. And, and he was convinced because of the, all the money he spent, and and he really thought she liked him, that they were dating. <laughs> what a sad. Where do you? What a sad. Well, you're not dating, a, you know, a stripper. You're going there. You're losing all your hard-earned money, and you're going home, you know, broke, broke, and nothing to show Frustrated. for. Frustrated. Frustrated. I, I, those, are, those are the guys that are saps at the bars. There's certain types of guys that you always see at the uh, nudie bars. There's the sap, and uh, the dancers can spot them coming a mile away. Yeah. Pocket full of cash, yeah. naive look on their face, and they really think they might hook up with one of the dancers. Right. So they just latch on to them. Then there's a guy, the seasoned veteran, who knows the best place to sit is right next to the sap. Right. Because then you could sap off of what he's spending. Because <laughs> the girls are always right over there. Sure. So you kind of give that little over-the-shoulder, well, wait, what's going on over there? <laughs> you ever do that? Yeah, of course <laughs> I have. The, that's the seasoned veteran. <laughs> right. Then the old guy. Uh -huh. You'll see the guy that comes in, you remind me of my daughter. <laughs> Just a whole sick story I didn't even want to get into. No. <laughs> my Lord. There's a cast of characters. It's true. Just got to know where to sit. Getting another fax here from Christine. Christine, got your fax. Hi, guys. I will say I haven't always agreed with things you've said on the air. However, when you started with the mayor's new assault on personal choice, I had a right. I know you guys are a comedy team. Wow, thanks for realizing that. My goodness. Most people haven't realized that yet. Mm -hmm. I know you guys are a comedy team, and most of your skits are for entertainment, but I think you have an opportunity being on the air to really do something. Let the listeners be heard or call in their opinion. Of course, you could call in your opinion any, any day of the week. What the show's about. Uh, who the hell does Rudy think he is to tell us what we can and can't do as consenting adults? If I have to walk into an establishment to buy porn, I am exercising my right as a consenting adult. If others don't want to see our, uh, see our, per, uh, see me purchase porn, they don't have to. No one is forcing them into these places. Mm -hmm. What's next? Will he ban TV shows or books in the libraries? Or have my bedroom tape for illegal activity. <laughs> Rudy, wake up. This is America. Signed, yeah, Christine. Yeah. Very good. He's a little frustrated. And like I said before, that whole thing that's going on in Times Square. Yeah. It's, that's no construction accident. That's uh, Rudy on the day one of him enforcing this strip club and uh, sex uh, shop law is getting all the witnesses out of Times Square. It's his way to make an emergency, get all the witnesses out. They closed it off to traffic and pedestrians for three days. So he can single-handedly go in and blow up the sex shop. <laughs> you heard it here first. 1027 WNEW, where Rock lives. Super Tuesday with the Allman Brothers. Now there's a band we should get in the imaginary ballroom. Yeah. How cool would that be? How many people are in the Allman Brothers band these days? About 400? Yeah. <laughs> 80 people. Every time I see them, the band grows and grows and grows and grows. One, still, to this day, one of my favorite shows to mm -hmm. see, the Allman Brothers, without a doubt. It's Opie and Anthony. If you got something for the show, 212-757-1027. Hey, Opie and Anthony. What's up? Hey, I called you guys last week, and uh, so I want to let you know, I know what Rudy uh, suffers from. What? It's called CMS. What's that? Chronic Mussolini Syndrome. <laughs> All right? I know. I grew up in an Italian family. And I'm telling you, the older they get, the worse it gets. So you're going to see New York until, what is he, until 2001? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Yeah, you're going to see it's going to get worse, not better that way. Uh, but as long as he doesn't shave his head, we're okay, though. 
I think that's the main concern. As long as he doesn't start uh, growing that goofy mustache. <laughs> hey, hey, did Hitler blow that look for everyone or what? Oh, God, man. <laughs> Can you imagine walking in at work with a Hitler mustache? Not because you're trying to make a statement, just because you think you look good like that. You know, a lot of guys wear the goatee and stuff, but no one is brave enough to just start walking around with that goofy Hitler mustache. Brave or stupid enough, I don't know. I don't know. Actually, my, my father says it, that there are a couple of uh, uh, people that he knew uh, back after the war in Brooklyn that had that mustache. Oh, man. And they, and they were Jewish. I guess it was a style back then in, in Germany. I don't know. It was a style, but that style uh, went away with the, the handlebar mustache. Yeah, <laughs> and it right. ain't coming back. Trust no, me. No, I know. I know. Well, you guys are awesome. Keep it up, man. Thank you. Later. Bye-bye. 1027 WNEW, where rock lives, two for Tuesday with two from REM from Murmur. That's Radio Free Europe. That song is 15 years old, which is right very, right. very hard to believe. And before that, it's the end of the world, but I feel fine. The song that everyone tries to sing, and it's hysterical. <laughs> You're in the car, and that song comes on the radio, and everyone starts in good. It's great. It starts with an earthquake. Right. Yeah, right. But it's one of them. Bruce is not afraid. Shoot, can we start over, you know? <laughs> hey, wait a minute. What? Uh, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in a little while. <laughs> wait, I'm listening. I know. Well, the mayor has forced yeah. us to do this. See? Yeah. Now I can get it on computer. I don't need the sex shop. Right. Well, well you should explain what you're doing over there. I'm on the computer. Yeah. And I'm, uh, I punched up a website with that. The, they got a girl on here and she's doing things. And you could talk to her, and she talks right back to you. See if I could get her to say hi. I want to say hi to her. What if she curses? I don't know. She's doing everything right now. Whoa. Just like Russian roulette. Wait, we don't have the delay on. And she curses, it's Anthony's fault. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you should see what she's doing. She's <laughs> yeah, well, I heard it. <laughs> All right, better turn the volume off. Yeah, it turns she's, She just picked up a little Christmas present, I think. <laughs> turn the volume down. <laughs> Way down. That was Russ and Roulette like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> My God, man. We haven't even been here a month and you're already taking the risk. All right. All right, we're getting lots of faxes today. Lou from Lou's Bakery in, in Delhi in uh, New Jersey. He, this is a pretty funny fact, actually. Opie and Anthony, referring last week's ruthless assault on Louis Anderson. What's wrong with that? Anthony hates Louis Anderson because he's not fun. Hey, Louis Anderson. You know, you know, I was abused by my father when I was in the schoolyard. Children would beat me up. Is this funny? <laughs> Hello? Am I making you laugh? I was abused as a child by my drunken father. Why isn't anyone laughing? <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> Louie! Ah! <laughs> anyway, uh, Lou writes, being an active member of ACBBDWWBA, which is a moniker for Adult Children Beaten by Dads with Whiskey Bottles Anonymous, <laughs> I found your comments on Louie's uh, painful life quite insensitive. Until you've taken a shot in the head from an empty four-rose bottle, <laughs> I suggest that that temper your comments with some uh, uh, sympathy. You spelled it wrong, Lou. Jesus. <laughs> I also have friends in another fellowship that felt the same way. My friends at F-U-C-A, Fat Ugly Comedians Anonymous, also found your comments to be a little harsh. Come on. <laughs> Hi, it's Louie Anderson. I, I was always fat as a child, and children would beat me up. Hello, isn't this great comedy? My abusive father and my mother who never gave me the love I needed. Now I'm fat and I sweat a lot and I try to make people... Doesn't work. Well, Louie, why do you sweat a lot? If I didn't, I'd explode. How many times have you Oh, that old joke. gag. Uh, Lou also Louis. goes on this to say, in reference to the porn wars going yeah. on with the mayor. Oh, wait. Porn wars. Uh, I believe that the fewer, I mean, Mayor Giuliani, has lost touch with reality. I think that he needs to attend a PHBPA meeting, Power Hungry Balding Prima Donna's Anonymous meeting, and immediately <laughs> thereafter, his honor should go out and get himself a Lewinsky. <laughs> And he explains what a Lewinsky is. Oral manipulation of male genitalia by an up-and-coming, no pun intended, intern. 
<laughs> Take care and keep up the funny show. That's Lou from Lou's Bakery in Delhi right. in New Jersey. Thanks, Thanks a lot, Lou. Lou. Ah. Well, maybe we'll get our lovely girl that's uh, doing a little act on the Internet to, to say some things about the mayor for us a little later. You you can't imagine what she's doing right now. Uh, I can't even describe I can't be begin to describe it. Uh, well, there's, there's extracurricular utensils being used. I, all right, well, here we go. Oh. <laughs> Rush. 1027 WNEW where Rock lives. Distant early warning. Whoa, 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 whoa. Love the ending of that song. <laughs> and Tom Sawyer in there as well. It's Opie and Anthony. Thanks for checking us out today. Uh, the new Tom Hanks movie starting Friday, right? Mm hmm. Looks like it's going to be the movie of the summer. Looks that way. A very weak summer movie season, I must say. Remember, they said The Truman Show would be the best movie you ever saw? Well, every movie that comes out now is the best movie of the year. Yeah. I mean, it was a good movie, The Truman Show, but yeah. it didn't blow me away. You know, it was a good concept and stuff. Yeah. Jim Carrey did a good job. But they're really saying that this is the best movie of the season, so. Tom Hanks lucking out again. Yeah. Getting another good script. What was the last bad movie Tom Hanks made? Does anyone know? Was it The Money Pit? Mm. Has to be, right? Yeah, that's on Showtime all the time now on HBO. That movie, oh. that movie was brutal, to say the least. But he has had nothing but hits in the last uh, eight years or so, right? Yeah. You hear what Matt Damon's been saying? What is what does he say? Well, he dredged up an old interview from like four years ago. Uh huh. And he's bad mouthing all the people in Hollywood. Whoops. All the young actors. Whoops. So it happens when you get famous uh, in your own right. All these things you said come back. He's talking about uh like the cast of the Three Musketeers movie that came out. Mm hmm. So those guys were bombed out of their mind every night. He goes, uh, it's not, it wouldn't help me as an actor seeing how drunk I can get with effing Charlie Sheen. <laughs> Oh. What's the problem with Charlie Sheen? Right. Has anyone seen my son? No, we haven't, Martin. Hi, this is Martin Sheen. I'm looking for my son. Well, Martin, you always have a cause. Is your new cause to find your son? And my cause? Sober? I'm for actors to help drunk sons of actors. <laughs> it's my new cause since the no nukes thing went away. Yeah, that's... I used to be very involved in no nukes. Yes, you did. You used to, like, uh, chain yourself to the silos and stuff, we, didn't you? We would go to the missile silos uh -huh. with hatchets and chains right. and actually chain ourselves to the missile silo and get arrested. Damn, those were the days. Where are the good causes? Um, I'm booked in Brazil to go down there and protect the Brazilian kabuchi bug. <laughs> The kabuchi bug. What the hell happened to the good causes? <laughs> well, used to be no nukes in the Vietnam War and good things like that. Now there's no good causes. Why are you trying to say the kabuchi bug? I don't know. <laughs> People are upset that they're being stepped on. I got to do something. Hi, I'm Martin Sheen for Actors Against Shoes. <laughs> do you know how many bugs are killed annually by shoes? <laughs> Have you seen my son? No, we haven't. He seen. left rehab with a bottle of Jack in each pocket. <laughs> this is Charlie Sheen, Martin Sheen, looking for Charlie Sheen. All right, very good. The hell's my son? I don't know. Go, go find him. Get out of our studio. So Chris O'Donnell says. Yeah. All right. It's not going to get any, uh, any raves in Hollywood well, talking like that about your fellow actors. Well, this off the AP wire about the Tom Hanks movie. Mm -hmm. uh, Steven Spielberg's new movie, Saving Private Ryan, might turn some theaters into war zones. According to Dr. David Turcat, war movies that vividly show the gory details of combat can cause some veterans to have flashbacks. Whoa. That is scary. The flashbacks can be so realistic that some vets watching war movies have confused their theater seats for foxholes, <laughs> while Come others on. become so depressed they cry for days on end. <laughs> Turcat says veterans at risk of having a war flashback should ha uh, save their money and avoid saving Private Ryan altogether, especially since the battle scenes are rumored to be some of the most graphic ever filmed. This is unbelievable. If you end up sitting next to a vet who suddenly feels <laughs> unhinged, <laughs> unhinged or uncomfortable, Turcat suggests e escorting the veteran out of the theater and into the lobby where you could calmly remind him or her where they really are. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. <laughs> I'd be next to him going... You have smoke, Joe. <laughs> right. You smoke, Joe. <laughs> right. Uh, someone from Nam's going to have a flashback. The last thing I'm going to do is try to calm him down. Hey, Kowalski. <laughs> right. Next week, we make love to Marilyn Monroe on White House Lawn. Right. <laughs> ah! 
<laughs> we had a tough time calming down our girlfriends after the Titanic movie. You think we're going to have any luck calming down guys going into flashbacks during uh, a war movie? Come on. <laughs> Jesus. 1027 WNEW, where rock lives. Two from David Bowie on Two for Tuesday. Heroes and Changes. A couple from the Stones in there as well. Stick around. We got uh, twofers on the way from Peter Gabriel and Pearl Jam next. It's Opie and it's Anthony hey. for your ride home. Hang in there. I know it's a little... Uh, worse than usual today. A little crazy with that uh, down in Times Square, shutting down a bunch of roads. A lot of yeah. things going on today. Subways crashing into each other on the upper, upper uptown, and uh, ladies biting it because that's that's an amazing story, actually. What the the elevator in the construction site falls? Yeah, uh, part of the elevator that's on the outside of the building that they're building in uh, Times Square uh, fell, and part of it, tragic, went through the roof. Of the Woodstock Hotel. It's like a bunch of old people live there. And went through the 12th and 11th floor. And landed, uh, they think, on a woman that was in the bathroom. An old lady in the bathroom. She probably yeah. survived the, the Great Depression. And this is how she bites it. That's life, man. You know, you go through life. Lived your life. You age. You get up there. She's in a hotel. Maybe going to the bathroom. One of the few pleasures in life when you get older. And what happens? Big piece of elevator comes through it. Just when you think you're crushes sick. you. That is that's freaky. You never think you're gonna be in a building on the bowl or something and all of a sudden a big piece of steel is gonna, gonna crush come you. Come flying through the ceiling, not at all. So take it for granted when you're uh all right. having a good time. Well there's a lot to do in New York to uh change the subject before we start joking about it. <laughs> It is very tragic. I'm telling the tragic story, I'm watching internet porn. Uh, I know. So it's even more Horrible on my part than what you're doing. We'll get into that in a little bit here. Uh, there's a lot of tours in New York. We've all seen the tours. They jump on those stupid red buses and they drive them by Central Park and drive them by, you know, the diner from Jerry Seinfeld oh. and all this boring stuff. And if you look out the right side, you'll see the horses that take uh, people through Central Park. <laughs> right. There they are. It's 110 degrees out, so don't, don't mind the one laying down. He's just sleeping. <laughs> You just know the tour guys at this point want to take a razor blade to their wrist. How many times <laughs> have they done these tours? The you know? same thing. And here is the time. Museum of Natural History. <laughs> and the biggest display of dinosaur bones that can be found, shoot me. Could someone just shoot me? Throw me off the bus. Kill me. I've done this for years. <laughs> uh, go through Times Square. Uh, Brooklyn Bridge. <laughs> and the Brooklyn Bridge. Bill, blah, blah, blah. Could someone put a damn brick over my head? <laughs> Well, I found an exciting tour in New York, and I'm going on this immediately. There's a company called uh, Tombstone Tours, and they do a tour of crime styles of the dead and famous. <laughs> they go all, all over New York and show you where people died and stuff. Whoa. Show you cemeteries. They they show you where, like, Lennon was shot, and they show you where some of the mob guys bit it. A morbid. It's pretty cool, but you ride around in a hearse at night, and you check out the crime scenes. I wonder all if they're gonna famous add, people and things like that. I wonder if they're going to add the uh, Times Square uh, area to the tour. They'll probably add the Irene Silverman area, to be honest oh, with yeah, you. Yeah, they probably would. That's probably a coming attraction, because we don't know if she's dead yet. Oh, my maybe God. Maybe they could drive by as a coming attraction on their on their lovely tour. But on the phone, we got Paul Bearer. I guess he's the guy that uh, takes you around, uh, and you get to tour the dead uh, New York. So let's that, talk to Paul. I'm sure that's his real name. Yeah, I was warned that this guy is a, a little wacky. To say the least. Hey, Paul. Greetings. <laughs> How are you? I'm feeling rather stiff at the moment with all this heat. <laughs> no but doubt. As you know, we try to keep our bodies well chilled here at Tombstone Tours. <laughs> Screw the other tours in New York. Yours entices me big time. It's guaranteed to leave you breathless. The only thing we don't include on the tour is oxygen. It's a little uh, gruesome, huh? Oh, gruesome, hardly. I think anxiety is the norm here in New York, especially if you ride the subway. So our tour is rather anticlimactic by comparison. And who wants to see the diner from Jerry Seinfeld anyway, right? Exactly. That's uh, boring. I want to see where John Lennon bit it. What we want to show people is everything that other tour companies don't want to show them. 